Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time, short 5, 10, 20 minute project. So I got this beautiful module from IC Station. And um, this is a Bluetooth audio receiver. So I had this old InMotion Alltech Lansing uh, stereo system. It sounds really good. Uh, and it has a built-in FM radio, it has an aux port on the back, and it has a Zune integration, which if you guys remember what the Microsoft Zune was, it was basically the iPod killer that they put out to compete with the iPod, but it never really caught on. It did okay from what I've uh, seen, and they had, they had a couple different revisions of it, so it wasn't unsuccessful, I would say. But it just never really caught on. And I got this uh, stereo system quite a while ago from a thrift store, for I think like five bucks, something like that. And I've done a teardown of it. Um, you can see it on my channel. If you are interested, you could just search All Tech Lansing Teardown. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to add Bluetooth to it. I use this as uh, my stereo in the morning when I wake up and um, while I'm getting dressed and getting ready uh, just to listen to some music and whatnot. Uh, but FM isn't so great now, um, and I kind of wanted to stream from my phone. So this is where this module comes in. Yeah, so there's only a handful of wires you need to connect. You can see there are 5 volts, ground, left, right, mute, and LED. Now the mute I'm not going to bother using since if I wanted to mute it, I could mute it from the source. So that's not necessary. That would just be a switch to ground um, that you'd click and it would it would mute the, the audio output. But I did opt to use the LED. It's pretty dim. With um, They put, what, a 100 ohm resistor. Uh, it's pretty dim with that, but... It, it still works and it gives visual feedback. Now to find which points to solder to, this was actually an interesting issue. So I have this plugged into a USB battery bank. It runs off five volts in the back. And i um, just gonna use a multimeter. Now when taking this apart, I knew I needed to get the audio signals from the Zoom dock area. And um, so to figure that out, I actually looked uh, this cable right in here, this guy goes to the aux port in the back. So I knew that another three pin cable near it would be the, the Zunes audio because all the audio has to enter kind of roughly in the same area. And there's luckily a three pin cable right next to it. And this actually ended up being the audio. I uh, just want to make sure with a, a multimeter to measure to make sure that it's not like five volts or something you're going to fry. Um, you know, this, this device, if you plug five volts into the left or right audio, it would damage it. So just measure it beforehand while it's powered on. I measured zero volts and the impedance seemed good. So I injected audio using a uh, cheap little mp3 player, this guy that I didn't care about if I blew up, um, and audio worked. So I was able to use that to detect which was the left input and which was the right. And it turns out the middle pin on this cable right here is ground. And then I believe it was left and then right. So that was fairly easy. And uh, I don't plan on using IR. I, it, this never came with the remote. I got this second hand. So I'm going to uh, bump this back and then that's where the LED indicator for the Bluetooth is going to go. So in addition to that, we're going to need power. Now, if this is plugged in, you can grab power from just the shielding of the IR sensor. And if I grab power here, here you can see there's five volts, but even though the stereo is off, that's always on. I don't want to leave Bluetooth on all the time because I plan on putting a lithium ion battery in here and using the soft power feature. Uh, so that's not good. So I found just probing along with the power on. Um, so if I probe the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh pin from the left, while the power is off, there's nothing. Now if I turn the power on and I probe that same exact pin, I'm getting 5 volts. And you can hear it say Bluetooth mode. So yeah, we're going to want to pull from that for plus 5 volts. Ground is pretty easy to find. You just uh, turn power off and then put the meter on your beep mode. And the shielding on the IR sensor is going to be ground, or you can grab it from the battery. And you just go along, and it's one, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth pin from the left-hand side. Now we have ground, we have um, 
plus 5 volts. And um, so we're going to need left or right. And as I already said, I found left and right. Um, right was the first pin and left was the third pin. The middle pin is ground, which I actually shorted to ground. I wasn't sure if it was actually connected, but I just did that because this Bluetooth module is a... Um, it's a common mode ground, but I believe this amp must be isolated or something. But it works just fine, uh, just shorting uh, my audio ground to actual ground just directly on this little board here. Additionally, I grabbed LED, uh, which is an active low pin. Um, I hooked that up through the resistor to the negative input of the LED, and then the positive just goes straight to 5 volts. And like I said, it's pretty dim, but... Um, you can always decrease this resistor. This is 100 ohms right now. I could decrease it if I wanted it a bit brighter. But uh, because I'm going to make this battery powered, I don't want it to be blindingly bright anyway. So um, this is okay. It just has to poke through this little window here. But anyway, yeah, it all works. And um, I'm going to do a demo once I get everything together. I'm going to have to find a Bluetooth device since I'm using my phone to record. So I can't play music and record at the same time. But uh, let's get this all buttoned up. Gonna put some, um, gonna put some double-sided sticky tape and just stick it to the inside lid here. And I'm um, gonna have to drill a hole for the AM FM antenna because the original antenna was actually cut. Uh, someone cut the wire off, so I had to actually go in there and solder a long piece of wire, which I'll probably tidy up and put like a uh, dipole antenna on the back, a smaller one. Uh, once I grab hold of that, but let's uh, button this up for now. As I said in a future video, I'm going to add some, maybe one of uh, these tiny little battery banks, uh, get another one, and uh, take it apart and fit it somewhere inside like here, uh, because there is plenty of room in here. I can fit a small lithium polymer pack, some charging circuitry, and then just wire, maybe cut a hole for USB or wire it to the original DC barrel jack, so... This will then become a fully standalone Bluetooth, radio, auxiliary input stereo. That sounds pretty nice. Anyway, let's get this back together. Okay, so I have it fully running now, fully back together, all buttoned up. Still a little dusty, but um, I'm using the FM radio right now. And you can see it still works. Um, just going to switch the source. One unfortunate thing, so I'll switch it over to Zoom. And we'll shut it off. So one unfortunate thing is no matter what mode it's in, um, the Bluetooth LED always blinks when it's not paired and then it, it goes solid when it is paired. But there doesn't seem it doesn't seem to shut off the five volt supply to the zoom even if there's no zoom connected and even if it's in another mode. So that's just something I had to live with. But I can. That's that's not that big of a deal. But anyway, we can turn it on. So you can hear it said Bluetooth mode. One of the good things about this is it just says Bluetooth mode and then that's it. So it doesn't play like an annoyingly loud jingle or anything like that. And another thing is um, the preamp to the Zune isn't that loud. So you have to turn up the volume both on your device and on the unit compared to the radio, which is much louder. Um, so it's something to keep in mind when you're switching between Bluetooth and radio, you're going to need to... Uh, adjust the volume otherwise you know it'll be really loud or too quiet anyway anyway I have an old tablet here and I'm just gonna pair Bluetooth with this guy now it should show up as uh, search for devices there you go it shows up as win 668 so I'm just gonna pair it to that okay and we're connected and then it just played dun -dun, and that's it so we're good to go so let me um, maybe start playing one of my YouTube videos and we'll see the uh, audio quality. It's actually pretty good. I've been listening to this for a little while, uh, just testing it in. You can see the LED stop blinking. It's solidly lit now. So yeah, once I stick a battery in this, this is going to be an awesome portable speaker. Just have to figure out the antenna. I just drilled a hole in the back and pushed the wire through. But I'm going to want to put, like, maybe drill here, like a right angle, uh, like an adjustable, unscrewable antenna, like one of those short dipole ones, something like that. Um, or maybe even a telescoping FM radio antenna from, like, a boombox that I've taken apart. 
might stick that on the back here instead of having this long wire. But the good thing about this long wire is it gets great reception. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that the volume's all the way up on the Bluetooth. Gonna man this volume control and let's give it a play. Hey there, YouTube. This is SJM four three six back. With okay, so yeah, you can see that it uh, works just fine. So on this tablet, you can see my Bluetooth volume is all the way up. And um, even with that, this volume turned all the way up. It's only moderately loud. Uh, however, on my phone, I can have my volume uh, all the way up on my phone. And the volume on this out of 30, put it up to like 12 or 13. And it's plenty loud enough. And if I push this up to 30, it's like deafeningly loud. So for some reason, my phone transfers the Bluetooth louder, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Uh, because on this tablet, for some reason, it's, you know, kind of quiet even even with this. This time, so I've been buying an old Game Boy Pocket. This is an old whatnot, tablet. And I keep an eye on so that. who knows, maybe it's some software and, issue. Um, like nice limited edition ones on. But yeah, anyway, you can see everything works. Uh, if I do turn it up, um... There is a bit of noise, I don't know if you can hear. It sounds like noise coming from my phone, which I'm recording it with. Uh, if you turn the volume down a bit, it's not that much of an issue. Actually, you can't even hear it at 19. <laughs> Dead silent. But anyway, um, just gonna turn off Bluetooth on my... There you go. So yeah. So everything works. Um, this will be really nice to have in the shop. I have currently like a big stereo system. Um, and it's it just takes up a lot of room. And this would be a lot nicer to have something small and compact and maybe battery powered so I can take this around with me. So yeah, everything works so far. And I'm really happy with this mod. So big thanks and uh, kudos to IC Station for sending me the module which is currently living right about here. And it works perfectly. Um, super happy. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in Bluetoothifying your old stereo system speakers or even making your own Bluetooth headphones, uh, this module is really neat. It's pretty low-powered. Um, but, yeah, it uh, runs. It's pretty neat. It's pretty easy to use. There's... Um, there's definitely the ability to mute, and also there are four pins on the side that look like a serial port. I have to investigate the chipset if you wanted to add um, modes so that you can actually use like play, pause, and track, skip, and whatnot remotely to control the device. That might be possible. Anyway, this took me about half an hour. I'm going to wrap it up here and say that we're good to go and actually use this guy now um, wirelessly, which will be really neat. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have uh, similar ideas, um, definitely give it a go. Um, these modules are cheap enough. This was like a couple bucks. Um, it only took me about half an hour in terms of figuring things out and maybe like another 10 minutes to solder it and implement it. So yeah, um, this is definitely a really cool Saturday project uh, because today's Saturday. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.